Hello, and welcome to the CDGC import-export process. Today, we're going to be going through a few things. First, the export process itself. Second, some common issues that are typically faced when trying to export and re-import. And then third, uh, we're going to go through the actual import process and how we would like to see that function. Here we have an example where we are in the data governance and catalog. And if we were to take an export, I can search for a resource, in this case, my example here, and then I can take an export through here. It will give me a file name. For now, we're just going to call it search export test, and we can start the export. We can view the status from the job status page, and I'm going to skip ahead to when this job is complete. Now that the job is completed, we can download the export file and view it from here. So this export was fairly simple. We have the catalog source, technical data source, and schemas represented. Each of these will have their own path in the table, and we can view, we can see the reference ID associated, name, and further information about each of these within their own tab as shown here. Now, one of the most common problems that people have is when they try to re-import the export file generated here. If they wanted to see a change in one of these resources, they would make a change here, either changing the catalog source name or uh, asset type or adding some additional information. Unfortunately, if we were to do that, the import process would fail. What we're going to have to do instead is navigate back to CDGC. And from here, we can click New, Import Assets, and instead of importing a changed file, we're going to download an import file template. When we do that, it's going to give us a few options of objects that we can change. Uh, for now, these include AI models, data sets, domains, and importantly, these also include relationships and stakeholders. We can choose any number of these that we would want to see. In this example, I'll choose metric, subdomain, and relationship, and we can download that. Once we download that template, it's going to appear as it does here, where we're going to have objects for each that we selected. So we have metric, subdomain, and then relationships. The relationships is going to function a little bit differently, where we choose the source asset, the source asset type, target asset, target asset type, the relationship that we want to give it, and the operation. We can make whatever changes that we want, but note that items in red are going to be required, others are going to be optional. It is going to help to have reference IDs, especially if two objects share the same name. I would recommend including this in all of the imports that we make. Once we've made the changes that we want to see, we can go back to new, back down to import assets, choose to import assets, and once we import, it's going to ask us to add the file. We can add the file that we just changed right here. If you encounter any errors with the import process, you can troubleshoot from there or reach out to Informatica GCS for further help. In summary, we saw that the export and import process can both be done from the CDGC UI, but they are separate processes. And while we can find information from the export that we can then use in the import, such as reference IDs or object types, the imports must be done through the provided templates. We'd love to hear from you at these following links, and thank you for your time.